Welcome to Comic Movie 10, where you get insight into everything comic book movies and television related in 10 minutes or less. I'm Joe Kane. And I'm Dan Kane. No, no relation. relation. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and share and keep up with us at hecklercane.com. On today's episode, we have Dylan Libby with us, who is playing Groot in Marvel Universe Live, Age of Heroes. And today we're going to be talking about James Gunn's... Um, interpretation of baby Groot and the fact that he is not Groot. So um, you had some interesting background that we talked about a little bit before off camera before we started. So um, what are you, what is your feelings on that? So as I play Groot in Marvel Universe Live, I did a lot of research to get into the character to understand his relationship with the Guardians and his mindset and kind of what he believes. He's actually really intelligent. Um... In, in our little pamphlet book, he's rated on very high intelligence, even though people don't think he has a lot of smarts because he can only say I am Groot as part of his race. Well, there's a, there's a lot of uh, background things that say he's a god and that he's from a different, you know, uh, from a different realm. And there's there's all sorts of different yeah. conflicting things. I mean, his original character, when he first was discovered or, or first was written, was a villain. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's an interesting um, thought process that now he's a hero. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting into that, into the background, he's he's made that transition from villain to hero. There's a lot of characters like Yondu who did that too, and many other and sorts of, uh, especially Dragon Ball is known for turning their villains into heroes. Yeah, that's a that's a big thing. Mm, sure, sure. Uh, in terms of Groot, uh, in the comics that I've read, especially the Rocket and Groot comics, is they're always a team. Yeah, sure. Um, Rocket. I remember there was one uh, chapter I read where Rocket and Groot were trying to break in or into escape from a prison. They were doing something in a prison and they were getting chased by all the guards and the policemen. And Rocket's like, I'm sorry, buddy. I got to do it. And Groot's like, I am Groot. Basically, he's saying like, no, I don't want to do this again. And, and Rocket's like, well, too bad. And takes his blaster and <laughs> blows up Groot, takes him until he's a stick, rolls through the vents, gets to like a small spot where he ends up in a jail cell with a bunch of prisoners and he's like, I'm going to get you guys out of here. And they're all like, how are you going to do that? You can't do that. There's no way we're getting out of this. And he's like, watch. And he plants Groot in the ground, and he pours water, and he pours something else on him, and then Groot grows right back out. Boom. Bursts out of the cell, gets all the inmates out, and they escape free. So, yeah. And then it goes on to the rest of the comments that they have the same continuity. There's never anything Groot them saying a beat where he's uh, now a reincarnated or a child version? Well, looking at the Marvel Universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, is is this something that he's taken license with now and said that Groot isn't the same person? I think he's either taken a license, maybe he's read a comic I haven't read, uh, and I respect James Gunn and all he's doing, and I love his movies. I just think this one fact has been changed for the film. There's another comic I remember reading and it was one of the first ones and uh out of the other comics which have a very like artsy type of calvin and Hobbes rough sketch yeah. feel this one was drawn more realistic with a more serious tone and it was placed on a farm and this little girl was at a farm and she found baby groot in like a patch like a corn patch or a grass patch and it's so subtle you can't even really notice it's him but you can tell like the eyes are there and he's smiling yeah, yeah. he's cute she takes him and she plants him and eventually, I guess, like, this biker gang or trailer park boys gang shows up and starts causing trouble on the farm. And they're trying to either uh, attack the family or harm them. Uh, I'm not sure quite this while since I read the comic. But yeah. there's a part where uh, she's about to be hurt. And then right away, you see Groot towering really tall. So he basically, maybe his circumstance that ended him up there, he was blown up somehow and he became a kid and then right away once he saw this girl was in trouble he grew right back to his normal size to save her and rocket came for him after and they left so i think there is liberties being taken okay well with these liberties um are we uh, are we are we supposed to ignore what happened in the comics before well, I mean, I feel like most of the cinematic universe takes liberties okay. in the comics. So I think it's something where uh, a good way to look at it is to accept that this is what the image James Gunn has for his character. Okay. There could also be something where uh, I know I've heard things in the comic where Groot has unlocked certain memories or powers based on certain cosmic events in the universe. So possibly maybe Groot is still in there. Mm. Maybe he is a reincarnation, and maybe one day he'll be given the knowledge of his previous self. Okay. So he becomes basically 
whole with his past version. That could be a potential. Something. All right, well, let me ask you something. Looking at the uh, the, the growing stability of the character, meaning uh, he he let himself get destroyed to save the Guardians in the first movie. In the second movie, you saw him growing from uh, baby Groot, and he's gotten a little, you know, a little bigger and a little bigger as we go, and we see that by the time they are now introduced into the Infinity War series, that he is now in, like, the teenage mm -hmm. state, and I think they were calling him the teenage Groot teenage at that Groot, point. Teenage Groot, teen Groot. Um, you know, uh, where do we see Groot going from here? Does he just grow up again, get blown up again? I mean, that, he, it, that happens a lot in, in the comics. Well, I mean, I think Infinity Wars, especially if they killed Quicksilver in the last movie, they're definitely going to kill a few people, and there's a lot of sure. rumors. You see that chart where it's like, these people are definitely safe. These people are maybe. <laughs> well, they, they, they look at the contracts and go, who has a contract that's left that is that is safe? You yeah. know? Yeah. You still have three three movies to do. You're not dying yeah. in this one. No, you're not dying. <laughs> so they know who they want to keep safe. I don't think they're going to kill off Groot again. I think uh, Hollywood kind of is smart, even though sometimes we don't think they are. I think they know that like Groot's a fan favorite, and sure. they hit the point of him dying once, so they wouldn't do that again. I think that uh, him... I think, I will say, putting the uh, other human, uh, not the human, other living being, separate being from Groot aside, I think his transition of growth is more realistic in the movie. Sure. Because a plant grows slow. Yeah. Uh, so right. it obviously, if he's well, taking... It's growing faster than a human being. Yeah. I mean, there's no two ways about it. He's, Plus, gone, he's gone from baby to teen. Right. Plus he's you got, said, you know, Groot's a well-liked character. Well, they just made three well-liked characters out of one. Baby, yeah, baby Groot, Groot, baby Groot, Groot Teen Groot, 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 and they Jeez. love all three of them. Yeah. <laughs> and they love all three of them. You basically tripled that character, somebody that they love, and made three loved characters. And now you have three Funkos you could buy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's a, it could be about toy sales. You know what I mean? The, the baby Groot with the toy sales went through the roof. Mm -hmm. And when you take a look at that and you go, what are the toy sales for that? And where, like, it, it doesn't make sense not to you know, really invest in that character yeah. and go, we want to keep that character around because mm -hmm. th he's just amazing. Just in the comics, though, as I said, he can grow at will, yeah. kind of based on what he needs. My favorite thing about Groot is there was one comic where he was really being threatened. Rocket was really being threatened. Uh, it was a whole, like, kind of cosmic event that had, like, the Silver Surfer involved. It was, like, a whole bunch of stuff. And hopefully now that Fox has 20th what Fox is going to be doing when you know mm. uh, under, under the umbrella of Marvel yes. and Disney, so we absolutely. can get back to that. Later. Yeah, though uh, in this comic, Groot had reached like um, kind of teenage years. Okay. Um, based on his situation, he grew to probably like teen size, maybe a little smaller. And they're fighting this villain, this mercenary or assassin, and Groot Rocket takes like uh, an injection of something. Mm -hmm. He takes some sort of pod with like a some kind of liquid or gel or and he inserts it into Groot like he takes it stabs it or throws it to him and when Groot gets that he just starts layer 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 and he becomes this giant behemoth monster tree even bigger than King Groot and he was yeah. like breathing steam out of his mouth with this like dark face and these glowing eyes and they were able to beat their adversary and after they beat their adversary Groot Rocket said hey calm down buddy come on I'm here look at me and then Groot you saw the steam went down, then all of a sudden, out from the stomach, a shell pops out the teenage group. So basically, he took on basically kind of a Zord form, a wood yeah. Zord form, yeah. where he can exponentially grow. But that, all right, <laughs> that's an interesting topic right mm -hmm. there, because now you're looking at, it's it's almost two entities. Mm-hmm. Um, the same way James Gunn is looking at it, that mm -hmm. he gets destroyed and there was two en ent entities. Mm -hmm. But that we're going to have to save for another episode. Okay. Yes. Um, I want to say thank you very much for Dylan Libby to come in and sit with us and talk and, and as our Groot aficionado. Um, if you do have any questions, in the link below, we'll include a link to Dylan's profile stuff at IMDb or MarvelUniverseLive.com. There you go. So if seeing if it's traveling to a city near you. Uh, we're just finishing up here in my hometown of Long Island, performing at the new Nassau Coliseum. Uh, so we have this last week of performing here, and it's going to be great. We keep traveling the country, keep performing for families, kids, and everyone all over the world. Excellent. Uh, thanks again to Dylan, and uh, leave your comments in the down below. See you next time. We are Groot. We love bringing you these episodes, and we need your help to keep them coming. Please don't forget to share and subscribe, and keep up with us at hecklocane.com.